Good morning. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Today is Tuesday morning, April 20th. Thank you for joining us for our devotion time, our time in God's Word from St. John's Lutheran Church in Barry Mills. Let's begin by going to the Lord in prayer as we pray Martin Luther's morning prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. What makes a person successful? What keeps a person up at night, wondering, thinking, praying, longing for success? Well, there are the obvious things that people look for to be successful. A good job, substantial income, influence, the opportunity to do something meaningful and purposeful in life, a family, being happy, doing the things we want to be doing. Those are all the things that most people think of when they think of being successful. That's what we go to school for. That's what we strive for. That's what we hope for. That's what we pray for. But what if it happens that things aren't going all that well at work with the job? What happens if we are financially struggling at the moment? What happens if our health isn't that great and we're not able to do all the things that we love doing? What happens if the people that we love and cherish the most in life, things aren't going that well? Is there success then? In the portion of God's word that we will be reading in a few moments, as we consider what faith is all about, based upon sections from Hebrews chapter 11, we're going to look at what brought Moses success. When Moses was raised in Egypt, in the family of Pharaoh, the wealthiest, most powerful family in the entire world, Humanly speaking, Moses had everything. Best education, the best place to live, people helping him and serving him, basically endless amounts of money and opportunity. He had respect. He had power. He would have been admired as the family of Pharaoh. Humanly speaking, he had every opportunity for success. He had the life that people, most people, could only dream of. He had the life that most people definitely would have wanted. But Moses, in faith, knew where real success is found. In faith, he looked to his Lord. And he knew that success is not found in the external things of the world. It's knowing the Savior. In faith, he was willing to give up everything. The palace, the power, the prestige, the wealth, the worldly honor. He was willing to give it all up because he knew that he had a far greater treasure. He knew that he had something far more precious. He knew that through faith in the Lord as his Savior, he was right with God. And it's good for us to know that as well, isn't it? So let's listen to what the writer to the Hebrews says as he points us now to Moses so that you and I are blessed to see what faith is. We read from Hebrews chapter 11, beginning at verse 24. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated 
along with the people of God, rather than enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short time. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt, because he was looking ahead to his reward. By faith, he left Egypt. And, and not fearing the king's anger, he persevered because he saw him who is invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith, Moses knew what was better. He knew his God. And he was willing to be counted as a slave, one of the Israelites. He was willing to suffer loss. He was willing to endure hardship, all because he knew that what he had by the grace of God in Christ was far, far better. What a perfect reminder for us. We can become so down, so discouraged when we go through hardship, and we do. When we face troubles, we become frustrated. When there are uncertainties, and there are many, we easily become afraid. We become so overwhelmed because that sinful nature that we struggle with each day wants so much of what is contrary to the Lord. We are so easily deceived to think that if things are going well, then we'll really be happy. We become so enamored with the world that if we think we have a little bit more, then, then we'll be content. We become so deceived and it just reveals the real struggle of sin. But thankfully, your gracious Lord God, your Savior, the Lord, was not content to allow you or us to remain in that sin. And that's the treasure. The treasure is that Christ, the Messiah, took the burden of our sin off of us and carried it instead of us. The treasure is the righteousness that you and I need is given to us through faith in Christ. Moses saw that and he knew that there was no difficulty, no challenge, no loss that could diminish the joy of the gospel. And he also knew the other side of that, that there was no treasure, no wealth, no pleasure that could be greater than what he already had in his gracious God. Let's pray for that type of faith because it is a gift. It is a gift. And the source and the reason of contentment is found when our faith puts its clear, sharp, singular focus on the Lord, on your living Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you are our greatest treasure. We thank you, we praise you for taking our sin away from us and washing it away when you died on the cross. We praise you, Lord Jesus, for rising up triumphantly from the grave and winning our victory. Watch over us. Wrap your arms around us in love and care for us as you promise. Protect us from harm and danger and keep us mindful of how blessed we are by faith in you. Guard that faith and preserve us in the joy and peace of salvation so that each one of us as your redeemed children might let the light shine and tell everyone we know that you are the Savior, you are God. We pray this in our dear Savior's name. Amen. Again, we thank you for joining us today for our devotion. We have a few announcements. Again, today is Tuesday, April 20th. Tomorrow, Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock, we will have a joint voters meeting with Christ Lutheran of West Salem. The joint meeting of our two congregations will be at our Lutheran Elementary School, Christ St. John's Lutheran School. It's an important meeting. Also, this Sunday will be our Churches St. John's quarterly voters meeting where we will receive reports and updates on our ministry 
as we move forward to carry out the Lord's work in proclaiming the gospel. Early in the month of May, the first Sunday of May, will be public examination for confirmation for our confirmands this year. That will be our 1030 service. And the second Sunday of May, which is Mother's Day, will be Confirmation Sunday. That will also be in the 1030 service. Please join us for our worship every week, Thursday evenings, 7 p.m., Sunday morning at 8 and 1030, Bible study between the services at 920, and Sunday school for all the children at 915. We look forward to seeing you. Let's close our time together with the Lord's blessing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.